Salutations gaming enthusiasts, George Bernard here. The Wii was one of Nintendo's most successful, most creative consoles ever. I remember seeing one in just about everybody's living room back in its heyday. Oh dear, oh dear me. It's also a console that I got a lot of games for. Now let's see how long I can hold these without dropping them. After four and a half years, I finally managed to scrounge my way up to the big 1K subscribers. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully the channel's growth will begin speeding up proper now. <laughs> it's time for me to do another of my console game rankings to celebrate this milestone. And if you'd want to see my existing rankings for Switch, Wii U and 3DS, they're all in this playlist. But unlike those videos, this is going to be a top 10 because there's way too many games I love here to fit into a top five. Let's bid adieu to the remaining ado and get on with the ranking. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Shortly before it was curb stomped to death by Netflix and all the other 10,000 streaming services around nowadays, I went for my first and last visit to Blockbuster and bought Mario Sports Mix while staying at my friend Adam's house. I've really never been a fan of the Mario Sports games. I only own like three of them. A couple on the Switch caught my eye, but I never got around to getting them. But Sports Mix was my first, and also my favourite by a wide margin. It's such a lively and fun game. Each sport feels very different and extremely fun in their own ways. The music is vibrant and terrific, the stages are fantastic. Waluigi Pinball, my beloved, why aren't you in more games? Just give Waluigi his own pinball game at this point, honestly! And the character roster is interesting, what with its handful of Final Fantasy characters and also from Dragon Quest, not that I've ever played any games from those series. It was still fun to play as them. Cactuar is funny. This is definitely one of my most played multiplayer games to play with my brother or when we had company over. Extremely fun, extremely varied. It's honestly hard to choose a favourite sport here. The mechanics of them all are really tight and have plenty of fun Mario flair. Volleyball sticks out in my mind the least, we didn't play it that often, and it's most fun in the rhythm game minigames to be honest. Speaking of the minigames, they're also all really fun and creative and they kinda double the fun to be had in this game as a whole. Basketball is fun, especially on Bowser Jr's Boulevard, but it's it always ends up taking forever to play a match in this sport because it takes like 5 seconds to score a hoop, making at least half the time spent playing is just those little character celebration animations for the score updating and re-grabbing the ball at the start of the next round. Dodgeball was my brother's favourite, so I've definitely played it the most. And yeah, it's really fun. It's the sport which places the most importance on accurate timing of button presses. It can get quite tense, but I think my favourite is the hockey. It's similar to basketball but not as fast paced and a bit more complex. Lastly, there's all also a fairly beefy single player campaign in sports mix. At least, I think it's single player? You might be able to play the tournaments with several people, I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, I played the campaign way more times than you'd expect for a multiplayer sports game like this. Sometimes there's alternate routes where you can unlock new character skins. Fun stuff. Good game. I recommend it. My PhD is in Dance! Dance! Just Dance is a series that just refuses to die. But back in its heyday, they were some of the most fun games on the Wii, making great use of the Wii Remote. In fact, the Wii was such a good fit for the series, they kept making games for it long after Nintendo themselves abandoned work on the system, releasing sequels all the way up to 2020, which is bonkers! But I have many fond memories of playing the original game with my brother and sister, and with guests on occasion. There are several songs I know all the words to thanks to this game, and I once performed the whole jerk it out dance at a talent show after committing it to memory. My brother left the room in embarrassment. <laughs> Not much else to say here, you know what Just Dance is about, good music, at least in the first few games. Fun dancing, colourful visuals, people banging their heads on my low bedroom ceiling, etc. I've still never beaten my sister at Heart of Glass. It is my greatest shame. I'm a spy. I don't have much of a history with The Sims games. I borrowed a couple of the PC ones from my friend Alana as a kid and had a good amount of fun with them for a while, but she also told me the infinite money cheat code, so that probably took away a lot of the fun of accomplishment I could have had with them. Some years later, I borrowed a much different kind of Sims game from a different friend, My Sims Agents. I love me a good story game, and this was a really fun game with great vibes, a good overarching plot, as well as smaller stories contained in each chapter. It was so fun solving this 
game's various mysteries and completing the puzzles along the way. I called the character for my playthrough 008, you know, because he's one better than James Bond, but my sister would make fun of him by calling him Oob. Speaking of my sister, she was never as into games as me, but she did also play through this game, at a rate of being about a chapter or so behind my file. Since I knew the plot ahead of her, when I watched her play, I knew exactly what cryptic little hints to give to creep her out. I distinctly remember once saying, this time the culprit isn't even alive. They were a robot. I adored exploring the world and solving mysteries. The writing here is great and often funny, and the vibes of the various areas are immaculate. Sadly, it's been a long ass time since I last played this game, so I don't remember the details super well, though I did buy a copy for myself not too long ago. I'm yet to replay it. Maybe I will soon. This could be a fun game to do a video on. Actually, while it was true while I was writing the script that I haven't replayed this game in years, in like over, well over a decade actually, like 15 years actually. While getting footage for this video, I actually decided to start a new file on the game and it was so fun, it's way, it's even better than I remember it being. In fact, it's so good, I'm gonna freaking let's play this game with Harry when it comes over next. It won't be a long one, like I'll just make a few, a very few, very long episodes, but this is a game that needs to be seen by more of the world. I don't care if I'm a Mario channel, I'm let playing this game, it's really good. Subscribe if you want to see it in some months-ish time. Trust me on this, My Sims Agents is peak. It tastes like soup. Is your epithet soup? The new Soup series has gotten very repetitive and stale over the years. Despite being well made and fun, after the first couple, the games had very little in terms of excitement or originality to offer. But for those first two games, before the new in the name and lost all meaning, the new Soup series was all about revolutionising the 2D Mario platformer. I'll talk about the DS game at a later date, but New Super Mario Bros Wii was an absolute blast to play, coming in a lovely red box. The main appeal of this game was the multiplayer, which I had many, many hours of fun playing with my siblings and friends. Especially that one bone coaster level where everyone laughed themselves silly falling off it a hundred times. I kinda overused nowadays, but this was the game that brought the Koopalings into the modern era and updated some of their designs, mostly to make Iggy look less… the same as Lemmy. Honestly, name a bigger upgrade. At the point in my life of playing New Soup Wii for the first time, I'd only ever seen them in Mario Bros 3 for the GBA, so it was cool to see them again, all of them having two of their own unique boss fights. Rest in peace Ludwig's New Super Mario Bros Wii voice. You used to sound like Snake from The Simpsons, now you sound lame as heck. <laughs> Side note, after having played a bit of Mario Wonder recently, a game which does almost everything better than the new Soup series, I will say that this game handled multiplayer much better. I definitely prefer this game's zooming out when you get further apart technique over Wonder's very annoying follow the leader method. Good game, lots of fun, a bit chaotic with multiplayer, but not overly so. Unlike some people! Twitter stinks. I'm leaving. At number 6 we have yet another 2D platformer, albeit a much less popular one with no multiplayer functionality. Don't worry, it more than makes up for it in other areas. Wario Land The Shake Dimension, or Wario Land Shake It for my American audience, is the only game on this list I played in my early 20s instead of my childhood and early teens, so it doesn't get any kind of nostalgia boost like the rest get, yet it still manages to make it halfway up my list of favourites, which is an impressive feat. By sheer coincidence, shortly after getting the game from my local CEX, the Beard Bros Let's Play channel started their playthrough of the game, which went on to become my favourite YouTube Let's Play ever. I first watched it while me and my family were camping in Hawkshead, and now whenever we stay there I re-watch it. Just look at the comment section of the first episode. I have watched this thing six times. It's very funny. This game is a work of art, a masterpiece. The animations are fluid and funny, the hand-drawn backgrounds are gorgeous, and the music is probably up there in my top five favourite video game OSTs of all time. The gameplay is mostly very solid, though there is occasionally the odd motion control gimmick that doesn't work very well. Other than that, it's great fun with plenty of missions and bonus levels to make completion a hoot. 
spooked. It's very possible you never heard of this game because I don't think it was advertised much, nor did it sell well, but it's a stellar game. Do yourself a favour and play it. I really hope it gets a remaster someday so it can have a second chance to be successful. It deserves it. I'm gonna tell you to subscribe, share the video, comment and like. Stick around here and soon you'll see that my content's three out of three. I've been working night and day, so please don't click away. Mario games I like to play and talk about them all day. It's the annoying self promotion segment. Ha ha. Sup guys, self promotion George here. It's been a while, huh? I got a new jacket. I actually got too fat for the old one. I need to eat healthier. You just got out of prison and after breaking the law of all sane individuals must subscribe to the George Mario Nerd YouTube channel. And there's a bunch of new stuff I got to promote. I'm talking Let's Plays, I'm talking reviews, I'm talking underwhelming mustaches, and so much more. Boom! Mario Wonder Let's Play with my friends. It's so pretty. Oh no, jump is B. Hang on, where's the controls? Oh, okay. No, jump should be B. No, no, should be no. No. That's Keep there it we go. No. no! Boom! Super Mario RPG Let's Play with just me. Tadpoles, don't just float there. Make yourselves useful for the bridge for Mario. You could just, like, give me a frog suit. Or is that racially insensitive here? I don't know. Ah! Its face is gone. Who took sandpaper to the star spirit? <laughs> star spirit's like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom! Eight whole Mario vs. Donkey Kong reviews! And some of them are real head scratchers. Sometimes there aren't even any enemies, just Mario vs. a few platforms and buttons. Yeah, that would have surely made a better title. Please, do the right thing. Subscribe to the channel and tell your friends. We don't want to see you go back to jail. Excellent! You shot the foul albatross! Some games are the stuff legends are made of. Some games manage to encapsulate perfectly the vision and vibe of a new console. Some games are so revolutionary that tens of millions of game consoles are sold simply because people want to play it. But only one game is Wii Sports. After several generations of consoles that, though having very high quality, very influential games, were selling less and less with each new system, Nintendo made a bold move with the Wii. This was the first time they went ham with a big gimmick for one of their home consoles. The heavy use of motion controls took Nintendo out of the depths of the Red Ocean market and into the Blue Ocean one. The gimmick paid off big time, and the two other big names in gaming rushed to bring out their motion controlled add-ons to little success. I think, I can't be bothered looking up. The beautifully simple fun of Wii Sports was a huge part of the system's triumph that generation, and its importance should not be overlooked. Wii Sports was one of the first games that blew my mind. The first time a game made me go, wow, video games can do that? Played this game with the fam constantly back in the day, even with my parents who couldn't care less about video games 98% of the time. So many great experiences, from the peaceful tranquility of the golf stages, to throwing the bowling ball backwards, to playing tennis against yourself just for fun, to impaling my own head with the baseball bat for a laugh. This game oozes fun and nostalgia for me. The Wii was my childhood, Wii Sports was my childhood. Yeah, it's hard not to see this one coming given the thumbnail. Mario Kart Wii is one heck of a game. In keeping with the theme of this video, which is apparently the Wii is the best multiplayer console ever, Mario Kart Wii is another one I played many hours of with my friends and siblings. Chock full of cracking tracks and battle stages, great music, the new addition of motorbikes was very welcome since 8 hadn't come out to make them lame yet, the new trick system was very satisfying to use, this game kinda has it all. It was also technically the first game I ever played online. My mum never let me and my sister play online growing up, not realising that many games don't actually allow direct communication with strangers, she blanket banned them all. When the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection was about to close down however, we were able to convince her to allow us to play a bit of Mario Kart Wii before doing so became forever impossible. So for a week, me and my sister got to race people online in Mario Kart Wii, and I don't know if this was much of a problem before the online service was so near oblivion, but 
But our experience was almost every race had at least one player hacking the game like crazy. There were people who jumped from last to first in an instant, people who hung back in second and unleashed an endless barrage of blue shells, and people who just hovered in mid-air with a star, exploding over and over. It was quite the sight, and as a kid, the challenge of defeating a hacker was actually kind of fun. Wish I had footage of it. I also played this game to death in single player. I got gold trophies and triple stars on every cup, and I beat most, if not all, of the staff ghosts in time trials. I earned the legendary, nigh unobtainable second me outfit as a kid. You may demonstrate your reverence to my karting skill by subscribing to the channel now. Mario Kart Wii is one of my favourites in the series. Honestly, a contender for my favourite Mario Kart game. Not sure which one takes that spot, gonna be honest. Welcome to the amazing Star Carnival! The Wii was a party game juggernaut. Though surprisingly, it only had two Mario Party games. The first of which was the excellent, the quirky, the last one before those infamous vehicles, Mario Party 8. This is one of the only games I've actually made a whole review video for on the channel, even though that video is very old now. So I'll keep this brief. MP8 is my second favourite game in the series, only coming behind DS, though this one is much better for multiplayer by merit of not being a handheld. Not many of my guests bring a DS with them when they visit nowadays. This one I actually played at a school friend's house before even getting my own Wii. He was the type of person who always had to be seen as the best at everything, so it gave me a nice little ego boost when I kept beating him and he'd complain about not being ready. Sure you weren't, William. Sure you weren't. This game has the best ever host in the delightful master of catastrophes, Kane, I mean MC Ballyhoo. Him and Big Top are such a fun duo, and I really wish they became mainstream characters after this. But alas, maybe someday. It also contains the best ever board and several other bangers, some extremely fun mini games. I think the motion controls make them way more interactive and engaging than usual. Terrific music, just all around great vibes. I also spent absurd amounts of time chasing high scores in the hot air balloon mode, and I believe I also bought everything in the shop. Again, if you want to hear my more detailed thoughts and don't mind watching an old video where I was still figuring YouTube out, go ahead and watch my review. If you're not new to the channel, you probably already know which games made it to the top two. So to keep you guessing which made number one, this seems like a good place to get into the honourable mentions, in order of worst to best. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a game that I used to like plenty, albeit less than the original, that I now appreciate much less after doing my recent Let's Play on it. It's got plenty of good in it, hence its mention here, but I've come to realise that it's a much lesser game than its predecessor and terribly repetitive. Wii Sports Resort probably should get on this list over the original game, and it would if I were ranking these purely by quality or if I actually felt attached to this game anywhere near as much as I am to the original. I got Resort either just before getting my Wii U, or shortly afterwards. I'm not sure. Late enough into the Wii's life for this game to not be very nostalgic for me anyway. It was a very fun game though, with lots of new sports which all felt distinct and worth playing. Unlike SOME games which I didn't bother buying and don't regret it. I spent ages in particular trying to beat Matt in Speed Slice. I came so close, but he is the ultimate athletic specimen. I was born after the SNES era, so before the 25th anniversary re-release of Super Mario All-Stars, I hadn't played the original Mario Bros, Lost Levels, or Mario Bros 2. With this game, I spent many hours playing through those classics in the pseudo two-player taking turns mode with my brother. I remember doing so while eating soya chocolate Smarties because it was during my mum's health obsession where she forced us all to be vegan for a while. They don't taste bad. I didn't own Smash Bros Brawl as a kid. I played it a bit at my friend's house, then borrowed it for a while, during which I didn't play the main normal battle mode at all. I only used it to play through Subspace Emissary, during which I never realized the game had more complexity than just press the attack button in the direction of the enemies. <laughs> It was fun. The Mii Maker isn't a game, but it's iconic, affects most of the other games, and it's fun on its own right just to make Miis that either look like a friend, family member, fictional character, or just whatever random monstrosity that comes to mind. One of those games that really amused my dad. Lastly, there's Mario Party 9, the game that only just didn't make the cut for this list. It's a controversial one, but I always enjoyed it a fair bit. This is another game that I've wanted to make a video on for quite a while, so subscribe if you want that. 
But for now, it's a fun game with a much more colourful visual style than 8, some amazing boss music, and though I prefer the classic style, the car mechanic was an interesting experiment and wasn't a total failure. He's just a giant head, how is he not dead? I go back and forth on a near daily basis on what my favourite Wii game is. Numbers 2 and 1 are my favourite games ever, and are so unbelievably close that until now I never decided which of the two I like better. But to just say, oh well, I like these games the same amount, would be a very unsatisfying end to the video. I've gone back and forth on which one wins a bunch of times, even within the planning and writing of this very video. But I've come to a decision. If the deciding factor between these two was which game is better, which is more impressive, or which was more impactful on the Mario series or gaming culture, then Super Mario Galaxy would be number one. But the main contributing factor for games to be on this list is my personal connection to them, so SMG gets the number two spot, just barely. Super Mario Galaxy was actually the first Wii game I ever played at the house of my friend Brandon who had a Wii before me. My first experience with it was as the little co-star cursor that stops enemies and makes Mario jump. While my friend got to be Mario, I vividly remember us taking ages just fighting Dino Piranha, me frantically clicking on the boss in a vain attempt to halt him, my friend being made to jump into the boss by me repeatedly. <laughs> I thought I was helping. That day we were actually expecting his granddad to return from the game shop with Mario Kart Wii, but it wasn't out yet, so he came back with Galaxy. Amusingly, I was disappointed at first. Later, when my family got a Wii, the games we got with it was Wii Sports by default, Cookie Mama for my sister, and Super Mario Galaxy for me. And my life was changed. I have completed, not just played, but completed Mario Galaxy several times. And if you want to watch me play through it and talk deeply about my feelings on the game over an absurdly long runtime, go watch my let's play of the game. Huzzah! I have a million excuses to not talk for long about these games. This is not a list of 10 game reviews. And Mario got sent to hell. Those who aren't new to this channel should absolutely know which game is coming first. Heck, you should know just from the first second of the video. Super Paper Freaking Mario. It abandons the gameplay of the first two games. I don't care. This is my favorite game ever. Hilarious, fun, moving, unique, hundreds of extra things to do post-game, and I have terrific memories of this game both in my childhood and in recent years with my Let's Play with my best friend Harry. Which you should watch because it's literally the funniest thing on my channel. Oh, hello, sweet Gladius. Is the food ready yet? Poor man. My brain is feeling young as a teenager. I remember what we ate two nights ago. It was during World War II. Nice old couple. Is there anything to steal? No. Harry, what kind of games have you been playing? Mario is a wholesome series. <laughs> That man's always loved his meals. I love that about him. Oh, what a wholesome old couple. And you wanted to steal from them. What's wrong with you? Um, many, many things. <laughs> they, they don't have a bed either. What is it? With, does, does the people in this universe never sleep? They, uh, they're getting older, so this is they're going to be their bed before too long. Get it? What? It's, it's a... It's a fire. They're and making a cremation joke. He's, he's making a cremation joke, people. Uh, I'm a bad person. I wouldn't say it's the best Paper Mario game. As a 2D platformer, it's average. As a 3D platformer, it's below average. In terms of how fun the gameplay itself is, honestly, most of the other games on this list have it beat, among others besides them. Its whole 2.5D gimmick is interesting and certainly makes the game worth a try, though I'd say the first two games are better at being RPGs than SPM is at being the weird hybrid it is. But I will credit Super Paper Mario with this. Its story is the finest in not just Paper Mario, but in the entire Mario franchise. The characters, the plot, the lore, the concepts, all of it inspired and engaged me in the same way the gameplay and spectacle of Galaxy did for me as a kid. My first time playing Super Paper Mario was at the house of the same friend who loaned me Brawl and My Sims Agents, in addition to being where I first played Galaxy. After playing through the first two chapters with him, he later loaned me SPM, which is how I played through the rest of it at home. Thanks, Brandon. You were truly my wee buddy.
Alright then, let's put these away. No!